Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you an asset for Unity. It's been out for a while now. It used to be a third party program, as far as I'm aware, that you could get in the asset store, but now Unity's bought it. And when I say now, I mean, you know, months ago, maybe it was last year sometime, but I haven't done a video on it. It's called Pro Builder, and I'm going to cover Pro Grids as well, but the focus is on Pro Builder. Um, the use of it is for like rapid prototyping, it's not used for modeling like complex and intricate. Uh, you know models for your scene the whole point is you do stuff in this really quickly uh, position stuff how you like it and then slowly one by one replace the uh, pro builder assets with ones you modeled in blender or maya or whatever um, so the benefit is that if you've got an idea for a scene or a level you can quickly block it out like really quickly um, so much quicker than making models in blender importing them realizing the size is a bit too wrong so you need to you know extrude something and go back and change it, it it's so much faster it's, it's kind of an essential tool and i hope you see why and i'll obviously teach you the tools there's quite a lot of buttons and i'm not going to go into what every single button does i'll go over the main ones that you need to know and what you'll use most of the time uh, so yeah, we'll get into that in a second. So I'm going to start off by thanking my patrons. Thanks to Michael, Norwegian Viking, Paul Robinson and Phil Bomb for their donations on Patreon this month. If anyone else would help, uh, like to help out with the community and server and channel and everything, then the link in the description below. And also there is the join button on my channel now if anyone wishes to help that way. But apart from that, let's get into it. So uh, before we actually, you know, make anything, I'll show you what I've been working on. So um, for my game, which obviously some of you probably follow, uh, if I turn on post processing and lights, it'll look a bit better. I am. I started making my scene and I model some like just a wall in Blender to then reuse over and over again, just as like, well, a wall that I can keep going down and down and down with. And then eventually I might polish it up. I made some pillars and whatever, and that's nice and all. But after a while of like awkwardly placing all these things and like just, it was really annoying. Um, I just kind of gave up on that and I was like, I need a better way to get this level working before I actually put in the assets that look right and position everything. So what I've done is I've kept this here, but then over here in my world, I've actually started using Pro Builder to easily like model out the uh, scene how I want it to be. So this is the same bit you've just seen with the room, but then down here, we've got like a doorway into a room with like a pit, and then I'm going to put something over the pit. I'm not going to try spoil it at the moment, but... Um, it's going to be loads of dungeon things, basically, like this, I've, fine, I'll just say, this is going to be one of those uh, tiles where as you get into the room, the tiles, there's laid out in a grid, and certain ones will glow, and then you have to go on the right tiles, otherwise they fall and you die, and then you have to start again kind of thing, so that's that's what's going to be there, you go down here, you come through this, and then I'm, I'll put the roof, the ceiling back on in a second, but it's easier to see if the ceiling's, uh... oh, that's, that's, that's the wrong room, uh, if I go to here, and the maze room i need to rename those objects but if i enable the ceiling we now have a maze just have you wander around whatever there's um if i de deactivate that again turn off the post processing and light so you can actually see um i have made all of these little like walls and like bits around all using pro builder and i'll show you how to do that in a second and so i've got like an exit there an exit there and an exit at the end that's the actual exit and the player has to go around i'll have extra walls in here that move up and down so you have to pull a lever in this i'll make a room over here pull the lever it'll knock down a wall you go through somewhere else just, just like a puzzle with the maze and then there'll be some more after that but all of this took me like what between well while listening to music and getting distracted as well it took me about an hour ish maybe a little bit longer um i was also you know planning what i wanted but it's very easy to do this in blender would have taken years like just to get everything exactly how you want it import it tweak it it just takes so much longer so let's go over here and i'll just make some objects and show you how to do it so first of all you're going to want the two add-ons you only need pro builder but i'd recommend getting the grids as well so if you don't already have it go to package manager go on to all and you'll find it in alphabetical order p pro builder pro grids so pro grids uh, obviously just make sure to install those and when they're done at the top on tools you'll have pro grids and pro builder i already had poly brush that's something else uh, i think i've covered that before i might not have i'll go over it if someone wants to but um pro grids you enable that simply by clicking on pro grids win window which i've already got here you'll get this little window and all it means is just like the normal grids you get in unity um but more useful so if we go and create a game object so like create a um cube or something over here you'll notice as soon as we create it the grid kind of highlights just under the cube and if i move it up the actual grid moves with the cube so it's relative to the object um when i move the cube around it locks like into place um so if i just like set these values to whole numbers 
so we're over here. As I move it, notice how it moves in increments of one, just like this one is here. And then you can actually tweak the snap settings to be like uh, two. So that means that everything is two units. Um, so you see minus 190, minus 192. So depending on what kind of grid spacing you want, then obviously you tweak that value. Um, you can always disable this whenever you want, obviously. Um, angle, well, obviously it's 45 degrees. Don't bother tweaking that unless you need to, I guess. But um, there's this predicate. Predic yeah, predicative grid, whatever the word is. And that just means that depending on which axis axis you're moving it on, it changes the um, orientation of the grid. So like, if you want to do like a wall and then you want to go back and do the ground again or something, it's up to you. Um, I don't really like this, so I'm going to leave that off. Then, um, obviously, yeah, you can turn off the visuals, that's simple enough. Um, I still have to mouse over these to remember which button does what because I usually just leave my settings off. Um, yeah, the grid snapping. So this is basically turning the, the add-on off if you want to actually move something just how you want it. But obviously if you're using this and you're going to have that on. Um, perspective grid, leave that. And then XYZ is just the axis that the grid is drawn in and used on. So X, Y, Z, you want it on Y pretty much all the time because that's how your things work. Unless you're doing walls then maybe, but I'd still keep it on this. And then 3D um, gets it in all of them, and it depends where your camera is uh, into how it's rendered, but I, I don't like that. It's a bit weird. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, I've gone through those settings. Now, when you go to Tools and you go and open up Pro Builder, uh, there's all of these. I would just go straight into the window, to be honest. All the things are here. So uh, it gives you a window like this. You, when you open it, might not look like this, so maybe it looks like that or something. Uh, so if you go down to the bit... Well, yeah, you can right click anywhere. Um, whoops, did not mean to do that. As long as you right click not on one of the buttons that are active, you can change to icon mode or text mode. Uh, I prefer icon mode because I've learned what the icons are for what I need. And it looks it looks nicer, it's more pleasing. And then floating window, or whether you want it to be docked onto your like Unity here. But I prefer uh, floating so that I can have it kind of in my scene window. Uh, let's go and put it back to how it was and obviously if you squish it it goes into column of one however many it can fit on so I mean maybe you want it on one or two let's just squish that okay so now we've got that over there you can put it wherever you want over here if you'd like um, let's say we get rid of this cube because this cube was made through Unity's normal system but let's say we want to make a cube in here so we can press this top button and we get a you get a cube it's just, uh, one by one by one and up here, it tells you, you know, you can spawn in whatever size scale you want. It's up to you. Uh, let's leave it at one. And then down here, we have more um, shapes that you can start off with. Just like in a Unity, you get cubes, capsules, whatever. In here, you can also do cubes there, all of these, whatever you want. Um, some of them are pretty cool. Obviously, you could still make them anyway. This isn't the only way you can make them. Like, for example, if you want stairs, then you've got some stairs. Just simply, you know, shook into your scene. Very simple. Um, and obviously, yeah, you can curve them if you want them to be curved. Like if you want like a spiral staircase or something, you'd have to tweak other settings to make it not look stupid. But the point is, you can do whatever you want. There's your spiral staircase. And you can also tweak the radius. Like there's so many good tools on this. Um, this is like obviously for rapid prototyping, but you might even want your stairs to be like this and you can just play your own material. It's up to you. Um, we've got prism, we've got plane. Some of the default ones, you got door, which is actually just a doorway, but it's useful. Uh, rather than awkwardly making your uh, shape for that, you can just import this as like a you know default, and you can tweak whatever you want on here, all the settings. So this is really useful. Um, there's not much more else to say about this. Depending on which stuff you're importing, you get different settings. So like the circumference and the uh, radius of the torus, which is basically a donut. Um, up to you. Now I don't use this that often actually. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to import those shapes. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, maybe you want to do what I do the most, which is this polygon shape. So as you know, polygon is just a multi-sided shape. So when you press it, um, you seem like nothing seems like nothing's happened, but it's actually spawned a new game object. And here it is. Here's all its settings. Now it doesn't currently have a mesh. Well, no, it has a mesh, but it's nothing. It's got no like vectors. Um, so let's apply a vertice. So let's say on this grid space, we want one here. We tap, and you see you get it there. And then maybe you want to make a cube that's two by two. So we click there, 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 and then make sure you click back on the starting vector. I keep saying vector, I mean vertice. And it will actually make the mesh. And then if you don't click again, 
you can drag your mouse up and down, left and right, whatever, basically to scale it. But let's just say we left it as a plane, so uh, we just left click there, it's got no height. Um, there's our object, you can press W to go back into uh, move the move tool, and you can drag it around however you want. There's your object. And then let's say you want to change the size of it, you know. Now, you might think, oh, it makes sense to scale it, but um, one problem about scaling stuff in this is um, that it actually stretches the texture and stuff, which is still fixable. You can go back and tweak the render settings on the material to um, to scale the texture so it you know doesn't stretch. But the easiest way to do this kind of thing, if you do want to tweak uh, the scale or like how big something is, is you can go on. Well, for for a plane, it's harder. You, well, not for not harder. You can click on the edge. So you you got vertice, edge, and face, just like you do in Blender, and then object. So if you go on uh, the edge tool, press W, so you're back in move tool, you can actually move out the side thing. And every time you do that onto the grid, it will um, add a new bit and it will actually set the um, texture setting so that it doesn't stretch, it just goes normally. And then maybe you wanna you know, stretch this one out, so there you go. Um, now, because of how I did that edge dragging, it's obviously gone a bit weird, um, but it doesn't matter. You can easily just press and do or whatever you want to go back and fix things. Now, when we're here, we can press face select, and there's the face, it's yellow, it's selected. Drag it upwards, and now it's got a depth of one or two or three or whatever you want. And then once you've done this, you'll be like, ah, I might want this bit to go out. And then maybe you're like, hmm, this should be a ramp. So how would I make this a ramp? Well, I would, if I were to make this a ramp, would select this edge here. So edge select this, go down, and then maybe you want it to be steeper, so you drag that up, click off it, whatever. Uh, and there you go, you've got yourself a ramp. Let's not much of a ramp, but you get what I mean. Um, so it's up to you to decide how to you know, design what you want for what you're making. But then it's very easy from here to make the shape into more. So you might want to just make a whole new shape for the next object, but let's say you wanted to continue. You would, for example, click on this face, and you're like, okay, let's make a, like a platform this ramp goes up to. So you would press, uh, rather than just dragging out, which would just stretch it, you want to extrude a new face. If you've used any modeling software before, this will be familiar. So you want to, to extrude, you hold shift. So if I hold shift and then drag, this is actually a new object. Well, it's not a new object, but it's got new faces. So for example, that face and that face is separate. And from here, you can say, all right, I want to stretch this out. Whoops, stretch this face out. But then that will bring the platform out to the side, the ramp. So if you do want that, then great. But if you don't want that, you want to then hold shift and drag it out again. So let's drag it out by four units and then go on this side, shift, drag it out by four units. And then you've got ramp up to a platform. And really, you can just quickly make whatever you want. So obviously, these two sides are separate. Maybe you want, um, you know, a wall up around the outside. So you would maybe go, uh, you would go shift, drag out one. So you got this face up here. Shift, drag up. So you got um, a four high wall. And then you just do the same on all the sides. So you say maybe on the back. Also, yeah, if you want to select multiple faces, you hold shift. So shift, uh, shift, drag out, click, shift, select them, shift, drag up. And then the same here, shift, drag out by one, hold this, shift, drag up. And there you go, you've got a ramp up into like a little room. And if you want like a ceiling, you can just select the floor and duplicate it, move it up or whatever. Uh, there's plenty of ways, you can probably find more efficient ways of making certain things. Um, but there's plenty of tools on here. As I said, like it's just, it's just great to be able to be like, you know, I want to uh, grab this and maybe hold E, not hold E, hold shift. Um, hold shift. Oh yeah, you can't do that because it's a uh, edge one round about. So maybe hold shift, drag up, hold shift, drag out. And there you go, you've got yourself a roof, for example. Like you, And this is for prototyping, so you, it doesn't really matter that like the top object is, uh, the face looks like that. It's a bit off. It still looks perfectly fine for a person viewing, but to edit it's a bit more awkward. But it doesn't matter because the whole point is for prototyping. You know, you've built yourself a little room with a ramp up to it. It's whatever you want. And obviously you can very easily just, um, you know, delete the thing and you're done so this video was uh, quite short compared to normal but there's not much more else to show you like there's plenty of tools on here but you're not going to use most of them uh, if people want more videos on this then obviously i can go into more in-depth things but this is, should be just a you know kind of start a video for using this and you know getting some prototypes going in your game um but as i said like it's just so good to be able to go like this you know you make yourself a shape boom you've got your mesh here and now you can do whatever you want with it you just uh, then click on here, you want a, you know, pillar here, so you just go into face mode, select that and drag it up, you got yourself a pillar on this weird shape, but then maybe you want this uh, 
edge over here to uh, to come out over here. Whatever you want, you can make anything runtime in in Unity just to you know build whatever you want. It's so helpful. So I hope this video helped you. I hope you you know try out the tools and experiment with them, see what you can make. Hopefully, it saves you time in prototyping for blocking out games. You know, making prototypes. That's the main use of it. Um, Feel free to experiment with the other tools I haven't covered. I haven't personally used every single tool on here and you get different tools when you're using different modes. So um, some other ones are quite useful though. I found um, there's a mirror one that was quite useful. So if I go over here quickly in the scene, I've got this object over here, which is a uh, wall that goes like that. And I've got the same on the other side. Now, what I originally did was I modeled this and then I rotated it to get the flip of the other side. The only problem is when you do that, the, um, vector cursor thing is upside down which is you know you can deal with that it's not impossible but there's actually a built-in mirror tool so if you uh, I honestly can't remember which one it is uh, da -da -da. it's on here somewhere so it's called mirror I'm probably being silly it exists I, I guarantee there it is mirror objects you press it boom you've got a mirror of the object you can put it there so that's very useful um there's just so many tools so have have a play around um but yeah that's it for the video so if you haven't already le uh, left a like and subscribe it'd mean a lot if you haven't already joined our discord server then the link is in the description below uh if you're able to help support then obviously the links are down below as well but apart from that thanks for watching and goodbye